Hi, everybody. It's Dr. Magarelli, CNY Fertility Colorado, bringing you uh, an evening of discussion about unexplained infertility. Everybody who's on Instagram, jump over to Facebook, please. Uh, Fluent Style, jump over. Ashley Keetel, jump over to um, uh, Facebook Live. We're going to be doing a little lecture today. So, uh, Nalimea Amazna, jump over to Facebook Live. Lindsay Best 87, jump over to, hi, hi, jump over to Facebook Live. Hi, Amber, good to see you. Amber Vance, you're already on Facebook Live. Keiki, jump over to Facebook Live. Wendy, jump over to Facebook Live. We're going to be doing a, a lecture today on unexplained infertility. About 15, 20 slides, definitely worth your time. So everybody jump over to Facebook Live. Hazel, I'd chef, chef, jump over to Facebook Live. Hey, Christy Dolrager, good to see you. Amber, retrieval number three tomorrow. Let's make it work. Hi, Claudine, over on Facebook Live. Hi from South Dakota. Godly power, hello. Be Noble Jack, my friend, jump over to Facebook Live. Uh, Coco Lidzatz, jump over to Facebook Live. Oh, um, let's see, the journey through IVF. Uh, we're also on YouTube if you don't have Facebook. Uh, so we're also live on YouTube, so you can uh, see CNY Fertility on YouTube. Uh, Darling Donaldson, uh, jump over to Facebook Live. Lindsay, good to see you. C. Gurrier, good to see you. Hello. Uh, the Phi Couple, jump over to Facebook Live. Uh, Georgia Realtor, jump over to Facebook Live or YouTube. Uh, it's either one. Uh, we're going to do a short lecture because the stream works, works better that way. So... Hello, Jessica Reppenhagen, Lindsay Best, hello, good to see you. Fatima, jump over to Facebook Live. Brit Da, jump over to Facebook Live. Or, um, um, oh, there's been numbers. I know, Dr. Frank is fantastic, thank you. Money Love 56, Facebook Live or YouTube. We're going to do a little bit um, uh, of a discussion on unexplained infertility. It actually, does it exist? It's a, it's a worthwhile little discussion. Lily Dupree. Thanks for being on Facebook. Uh, please jump on if you are on uh, YouTube Live also. JK Mom 5, uh, jump over to Facebook Live. Um, okay, okay. Uh, Kristen Reyes Mayers, say hi. Hello. Ashley Kaidel, good to see you. Glad you're on. Brittany Chug, Chud, jump over to Facebook Live. Uh, we're going to be doing, or, or YouTube, uh, we're going to be doing a lecture over there. Uh, hi, can I PM you? Did you have any side effects from the meds that, oh, that's something different. Baby 7 jump over to Facebook Live or YouTube channel uh, for our lecture. Cameros, 126, every, uh, every two weeks I try to do a lecture on something. Today it's on unexpected, unexplained infertility. Does it exist? Kimmy Hugh, jump over to Facebook Live. Labor, 181, jump over to Facebook Live. Bree Madsen. Jump over to Facebook Live or YouTube. Hi, Brianna Simon. Good to see you. Nikita, good to see you. Thanks for jumping on. Uh, Scrub Lafinette, uh, jump over to Facebook Live. We're going to be doing our uh, lecture over on this side. Uh, and then after the lecture, about a half an hour, we'll jump into questions and answer, usually about the lecture, but you could have all kinds of questions. Um, and then uh, Scrub Lefinette, Scrub Lefinette, we're going to be answering those questions later. Uh, no one is there. I'm not sure what you mean, uh, Papa Izzard, no one is there. I'm uh, stream it, streaming on Facebook and YouTube. Um, so CNY Fertility, and a lot of people are on the CNY Fertility Facebook Live side. Now, the YouTube may not be working because I've never seen anybody on it, but uh, and I could find out Bird Bash. Jump over to Facebook Live. Um, the Real Crystal Gellis, jump over to Facebook Live. I guess Alto Pharmacy, you can jump over to Facebook Live. Be Ye Separate, jump over to Facebook Live. Jessica Vago, Matson Wood, there's a big name. Love those words. YouTube is working. Thank you, Journey Through Life. I really appreciate that. I know who you are. <laughs> I actually know who you are. Uh, Tenya981, jump over to Facebook Live. Um, Ashley, hello. Christine Reyes, Mayors, hello. I love the waves. Hi, everybody. It looks like we got lots of people jumping onto the Facebook Live, um, watching me on YouTube now. So you can go to the YouTube uh, channel if you don't have Facebook and 
Jump over there, Boss Lady 88. Jump over to Facebook Live, B Jones 113. Jump over to Facebook Live. Hello from Florida. I like Florida. Conceive Health has joined. Please jump over to Facebook Live. I'm going to be doing a lecture there. Thanks for the kisses, the journey through life. Um, hi from Georgia. Good to see you. Um, that's Camille. How are you? Yuli uh, Shermanson. Yuli Shermanson. Jump over to Facebook Live, MCL, LCB. Jump over to Facebook Live. Shauna Faulkner. I want to say hi. Just transferred our frozen embryo last window. Beta is on Friday. So we cross fingers. Everybody cross hands, fingers, toes, all that great stuff. So we're going to start the lecture over on the um, Facebook Live and YouTube channel. Um, it's going to last about uh, it's, it's 15 slides. So you figure about 20 minutes. And then after that, uh, we'll have a discussion. Um, and then after that, uh, we'll have questions and answers. I do this every two weeks. Sometimes I miss. Hello, Chandra from Kentucky. Welcome, welcome. Not, naughty Girl Key. Jump over to Facebook Live. Key Duff. Key Duff's baby joined. Jump over to Facebook Live. Danny0929. Jump over to Facebook Live or um, jump over to YouTube. Um, so we're down to six people on the uh, Insta Instagram. We'll come back later to Instagram. But for now, folks, Please remind people to jump over to Facebook Live so we can get started on the lecture. So let's see what we got here. Okay. So today we're going to be talking about um, unexplained infertility. Does it exist? Um, so the first thing you might want to know is what is unexplained infertility? Well, it's something that is, I call it a, uh, 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 if nothing else, uh, diagnosis. So if it's not the egg, it's not the sperm, it's not the uterus, it's not the fallopian tubes, it's not ovulation, it's not endometriosis, it's not age, it's not male factor, it's not ovarian reserve, then, then um, you really have to start saying, we're not exactly sure um, what it is. Uh, you have to have a fallopian tube to have this diagnosis open. You have to have proven ovulation. A sperm analysis must show, and there's the quotation marks, adequate numbers of modal sperm. And it's treated empirically, which means trial and error. In other words, if we can't, usually as a reproductive endocrinologist, we want to figure out what's wrong, then treat it. That's pretty much true of all doctors. Um, just for, anybody who was on Instagram now, please jump over to Facebook Live. We're doing a, log, a lecture over here or YouTube, uh, CNY Fertility YouTube. Then we'll jump back to questions. So Key what Kay, Kai Lawrence or Oregon Mama a phone, 58 Enchanted Soaps, Sean Burkett Cohen, jump over to Facebook Live. There you go. All right, baby dust to everybody. So it's really tough to hear that uh, you have a diagnosis that nobody understands. Now it says 30%. I usually say it's about 5% if it's a well-studied person. So a lot of times you'll get that diagnosis from gynecologists or family practice docs, mainly because they don't have the tools that we in uh, reproductive medicine have, uh, in reproductive endocrinology and infertility have to be able to diagnose things. And uh, as you can well imagine, there are tests and tests and tests. and. Um, so be that it may, it does exist, um, and there's uh, a basic treatment for it. One is called superovulation, and this can be with Clomid, Letrozole, or Gonadotropins. Why do we superovulate? Well, you have more targets uh, for sperm. So the more eggs you have, the more likely one of them will be fertilized by those, by those thousands of sperm that reach the fallopian tube and uh, try to impregnate the egg. So that's part of the idea of using what's called superovulation or ovarian hyperstimulation, not the syndrome, just hyperstimulation. And a lot of people are familiar with Clomid, Letrozole as oral agents to do that, and gonadotropins are injectable agents. So the first thing we want to do is have more targets. The second thing we want to do is we want to um, uh, uh, have more bullets to hit those targets. So that's why we do an insemination with uh, uh, ovulation induction or, or ovulation, super ovulation. 
so that like rather than a pistol shooting a, a, a one shot at a time, one bullet at a time, a machine gun can shoot thousands of bullets per minute. So there's more likely to hit a target. So you make more targets and then you you make more bullets to hit those targets. Now, I know that's a military analogy, but it, it's the best one that works. Okay, so that's the philosophy behind the various treatments. All those great folks on the Instagram, Cast DRN86, Jamin Navarez, Charlie's Journey 2021, Hurricane Katrina 317, all jump over to Facebook Live, guys. We're doing a... Uh, uh, a little lecture on unexplained infertility. So jump over to Facebook Live or YouTube Live. And uh, after we do the lecture, we'll s swing back to um, questions and answers. So again, the basic treatment is get more tar get uh, more targets. Okay, that's more eggs. And then shoot more bullets or get more sperm there. So that's an IUI. So what, what have we learned? Well, the first uh, option that people think about, well, maybe we should treat our um, uh, unexplained infertility by washing the sperm and putting it inside. Now, I'm going to be talking about randomized controlled trials, cost-effectiveness studies, cohort studies, where they compare one group against another. And the reason I'm telling you that is that these are good data. This is based on a summary by the, um, uh, the committee, the practice committee for the American Society for Reproductive Medicine, it, it, they do these wonderful summaries, thankfully, by dozens and dozens and dozens of authors that puts together a plan so that you guys know what best treatment to do. So all those folks um, who are on Instagram, please jump over to Facebook Live, uh, like Leaky Spoon, uh, Emmeline Mead, BKNJ03, jump over to Facebook Live, um, vicious, jump over to Facebook Live. All you guys, jump over to Facebook Live or YouTube because I'm doing a lecture over there. So in this first group of studies, there were seven randomized controlled trials, which is a large amount of studies, looking at just if we wash the sperm, does that get people more pregnant than simply having sex? If you have unexplained infertility. And the answer is sex wins. In other words, in all of these studies, the conclusion is that doing an IUI is just a cost that's unnecessary. It doesn't get you to pregnancy any sooner than simply having sex alone. So not only are we gonna tell you about things that do work, but I'm gonna tell you about things that don't work. Well, what about just Clomid? Um, four randomized controlled trials, three systemic reviews, again, Plain Clomid plus intercourse or timed intercourse or homework has no more likely to ch chance to help a person with unexplained infertility than simply sex alone. So again, do sex, go to a nice hotel, go to take a vacation. But the bottom line is there's the, doing medicated cycles alone doesn't necessarily get your pregnancy sooner. What about letrozole? That's another oral medication. That Medicaid, again, two randomized control trials, not as many as Clomid because it's been around not as long, two systemic, systematic reviews. And again, they found no advantage to do letrozole plus homework, letrozole plus sex. Uh, simply sex is much more likely to achieve a pregnancy or equally as likely to achieve a pregnancy in women who meet the criteria. Let's go back to the criteria. To be in this group, you must have one fallopian tube, must have proven ovulation. So why would an ovulation agent help? Have sperm that with, has adequate amounts of modal sperm. So if someone labels you as unexplained, IUI, clomid plus IUI, clom clomid plus sex, sorry, retrozole plus sex is not going to get you any closer to pregnancy than sex alone. But what about those really expensive injectable medicines? That must be better. Again, no better than oral eight, four randomized control trials, one systemic review, three cohort studies. None of those were any better than sex. In other words, gonadotropins plus sex is equal to sex alone in those patients who are told they have unexplained infertility. Now, if you have an explanation, then you just simply treat the explanation. But many, 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 many couples have told me the year that they've been at this year, 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 year after year, trying to get pregnant because their doctor said it was unexplained. Most likely it's not, but even if it were, 
simply having sex is going to manage it compared to either oral medications or injectable medications. Well, what if we add Clomid plus IUI? Okay, then there you go. There's a treatment. There's 19 randomized controlled trials, four systematic reviews, three cohort studies. And what they found is in those folks, hi, Lindsay, in those folks who had unexplained infertility, they were three times more likely to get pregnant if they added Clomid plus an IUI. The exact same results for letrozole, another oral medicine plus IUI. The exact same results from um, uh, Clomid or letrozole plus low, low uh, gonadotropins plus IUI. So it seems there's a synergistic effect when we add Clomid plus IUI, letrozole plus, or letrozole plus IUI, or gonadotropins and letrozole or Clomid plus IUI, they seem to do better than just simply sex in this group. So now you know, okay, that might be a step. Maybe that's what we start with. Um, maybe that's what we start with. Some people, and there's like 13 randomized control trials, one systemic review that looked at low dose gonadotropins, because there's a fear with gonadotropins that you're gonna get multiples, two, three, four, five babies. In reality, you can get more, typically get more multiples from unmonitored Clomid cycles than you do from any other treatment. However, what they did find um, is that using low-dose gonadotropins were no better than the inexpensive Clomid or letrozole plus gonadotropins and IUI. So there was no benefit to not adding the, clo the Clomid or letrozole, much less expensive. And it, and it turns out that um, after six months, there's actually not much of a difference either. So that low-dose gonadotropins aren't exactly the great, great way to go. Con conventional gonadotropins, you know, 150 international units probably is a conventional dose. There's eight randomized control studies, two cohort studies. Again, spending the extra money on the injectables does not necessarily do any better than Clomid or letrozole plus IUI. The only thing it does do is increases your chance for triplets, quadruplets, quintuplets, octuplets, septuplets, nonuplets, whatever the hell you say. What it does is it creates a uh, very uh, risky situation for families and mom. Um, so you can see that uh, as a therapy, your best is either sex, try that. If that doesn't work, Clomid or Electrozole plus IUI because it's very inexpensive and it gives you a bo bonus round. So what's the bonus round? Well, it'll get you to about 25% chance of a success versus 9% with sex alone. So yes, it's about three times uh, better, but it's not uh, like 50 or 60%, which brings us to, um, okay, which it doesn't do that. So all you wonderful folks on Instagram, please jump over to Facebook Live or YouTube. Uh, we're doing a lecture on unexplained infertility. And then later on, we'll uh, come back and do some questions and answer. What's better, Clomid or Letrozole? There's no difference. The outcomes are the same. Letrozole natural cycle it does has no benefit over sex. That's exactly what I'm saying here. Letrozole, uh, a Letrozole cycle in sex is no better than sex alone, unless you don't ovulate, okay? That's the point of these very basic slides. So what about the timing of the IUI? Uh, you know, we worry about your trigger shot and how many hours, is cer certainly with IVF, but it turns out anywhere from zero to 36 hours after the trigger, there's no impact of, of uh, when you do the IUI. So don't sweat the timing. I guess that's my main point is don't sweat the timing. Uh, second, there's no difference between doing one IUI versus two IUIs. It's just an expense that doesn't lead to better outcomes. Okay. Um, and then third, there's no difference if you use ultrasound to time the ovulation or an LH trigger urinary strips. So again, it's going to depend on the monitoring. Now, <clears throat> there is a benefit to doing ultrasound sounds because it'll tell you if you have five, six, or seven follicles, and that could be a, 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 a very dangerous, okay? That could be very dangerous. Um, 
So all you folks on uh, Instagram, like the official Lena and Dallas Brown Music and D Dash and Jeanette three five nine two two, jump over to Facebook Live or YouTube Live, and I'm doing a little lecture there. So the timing of your IUI is not critical. So what about IVF? Well, it's the this is the key. It is the number one treatment for nearly all causes of infertility, including unexplained. There are many, 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 many studies, but there is a process by which you should approach IVF. It's not, if you're less than 38, do about six months of uh, Clomid plus IUI or Letrozole plus IUI. It's inexpensive, it's effective, it's gonna be as effective as it is. But if you're over 38, you may it actually benefits you to get there quicker and less expensively to do IVF. Uh, you can go, and here's the other thing, go directly from oral medicated IUIs to IVF. Don't go oral medicated IUI. I was trained oral medicated IUIs, then injectable IUIs, then, then IVF, no. If the oral medicines plus IUI uh, doesn't work, then jump straight to IVF. And especially if you're over 40, jump straight to IVF. There is no difference between IUIs and I and uh, and intercourse in a woman over 35. In other words, it's an egg issue. So the IVF is going to help. And also what they found was there was no difference in outcomes between conventional IVF and uh, ICSI. So the um, that means that if you have unexplained, not male factor, if you have unexplained infertility, um, then you could do conventional IVF versus doing ICSI. Now we don't charge extra for the ICSI. You get more. You tend to see more fertilizations occur, more you know, more embryos made. So we don't delineate. And there's no savings for not doing ICSI. So I would do ICSI. So what do we conclude? That sex wins uh, for unexplained infertility, but when it doesn't, which is six months or a year, try oral medicines and IUI for six months, then IVF if you're under 38. If you're over 38, then straight to IVF because it'll be less expensive, less expensive and you are more likely to get pregnant uh, and carry to term in that circumstance and persistently doing oral medicines without IUI. Don't ever do that if for unexplained um, natural cycles. Don't do that for unexplained. Uh, it, there's no benefit uh, to doing natural cycles. Um, so going back again, and I'll do it. I'm going to quickly go through for you latecomers and all you people who are on Instagram. I'm going to do this concluding slide and then I'll jump back to Instagram. Um, Unexplained fertility exists. Some people say it's as high as 30% of couples. The way and the way to be unexplained infertility, it can't be an egg issue or sperm issue. It can't be a uterine issue. It can't be a fallopian issue. It can't, it can't be a person who doesn't ovulate. It can't be a person who has endometriosis. It can't be a person who's older than 35. It can't be a person who has male factor. You have to have one fallopian tube open, must have proven ovulation, sperm analysis with adequate number of modal sperm. And unfortunately, it's a trial and error, trial and error. Uh, the reason we super ovulate is to get more targets for the sperm to hit. And the reason we do IUI is to get more, more sperm to hit those targets. So a good logic to it. Ovulate, IUI alone, no better than sex. Clomid alone, no better than sex. Letrozole alone, no better than sex. Gonadotropins, no better than sex. Uh, Clomid plus IUI, much better for treating unexplained. Letrozole plus IUI, much better for treating unexplained. Gonadotropins, letrozole and gonadotropins and IUI, much better, but watch for multiples. Low dose gonadotropins, not really those so super low doses of gonadotropins. They're just fearful. They don't help uh, versus sex, so do sex. Conventional dose, yep, it's uh, it works, but it's no better than Clomid plus IUI or Letrozole plus IUI, and the savings are enormous. But you have to watch. There's more multiples in that situation. When you timing IUI, don't worry what time your trigger is. Don't worry about getting more than one IUI, and don't worry if you can't get an ultrasound and you're doing the LH strips. Don't worry. It's not going to affect you. IVF, it's the number one treatment choice for all of infertility, all causes, 
including unexplained. However, you should approach it cautiously. Try Clomid plus IUI if you're less than 38 or Letrozole plus IUI if you're less than 38 for six months if it doesn't work. On Clomid in particular, make sure you do three months of Clomid, take a break for a month, jump for another three months, and then you're done for life. You can go directly from oral medicated IUIs to IVF. You do not have to jump uh, to injectable uh, medications in IUI. And actually, if you have unexplained infertility, which means a normal male factor or normal levels of sperm, then IVF versus ICSI, no big difference. So again, one more time, the conclusion is that sex does win, but when it doesn't, try oral meds plus IUI for six months, then IVF if under 38. Um, and then if over 38, then straight to IVF. All right, guys. All right. So now the, uh, the, the dialogue is open for uh, questions. Um, 39, able to conceive with letrozole on the first try. Two less pregnant resulted in bladded ovum and trisomy. Any harm in doing letrozole with trigger and intercourse? No harm, but it's no better than intercourse, Andrea, especially over 38. And, and it's not going to help you with your uh, miscarriages. Um, Ashley, we had one failed fresh and one failed frozen. Male factor. Um, I have a positive antinuclear antibodies. I'm 29. Um, I did antihistamine, Lovenox, baby estrogen, prednisone, acupuncture, just wondering what to do next. Well, do chromosomally tested embryos, do an ERA, endometrial receptivity assay, uh, continue with your acupuncture. Uh, I'm 33 and I had two ectopic pregnancies from, from blocked tubes. Now my tubes are completely narrowed. What will work for me? IVF, BE separate. Um, I don't know what P-R-O-V-E-N ovulation is. Oh, what is proven ovulation? Oh, I'm sorry. That's when you produce progesterone. Uh, that's the word proven. Not That looked like it was a name of a brand. Um, coming to Colorado this week, hoping to have my FET. Yay. Major difference between letrozole and Clomid. Clomid is an, a um, selective estrogen receptor blocker. And it has effects for about six weeks, has side effects on vision. It also can create a birth control effect. Letrozole is an aromatase inhibitor. It works by uh, not allowing your testosterone to convert to estrogen. It makes your own body produce natural FSH. I think it's safer. It has a half-life of maybe a day. Clomid has a half-life of about six weeks. So mm, I'd say 90 plus percent of all trained, board certified, reproductive endocrinologists in the world will go with letrozole over Clomid. Uh, and it's actually cheaper letrozole. If my FSH is high, would it hurt for a frozen transfer? It has nothing to do with your uh, FSH, Lindsay. What does FSH need to be for a frozen transfer? Not a thing. Um, uh, Julian, I was prescribed Provera to start my period. I'm on day seven after stopping, I still no period. Should I be worried? Yeah, go in, for, not worry, but go in for an injection to see if you can get it started. Stacy, converting IVF to timed intercourse or is trying an IUI better? Over 38, decided not to move forward with egg retrieval because of large lead follicle. Oh, you have to do an IUI. Oh my God, yes. Um, I had an IVF male factor was okay. Doctor said everything was fine. Uh, none made to blast. Don't know what the question is. Um, we're on a third transfer with IVF. We transferred two blasts. Um, euploid and, uh, uh, what the hell, uh, I'm 33 and on everything possible right now. And I'm having lots of cramping. I'm just going to beta tomorrow and I'm terrified. How long is cramping normal? You should have no, tr no cramping, Kayla. Increase your fluids, increase your progesterone. It may well be your period that's coming on, uh, but make sure you're taking your progesterone. Shauna, I had a failed IVF, had nine mature, four fertilized with ICSI. They stopped progressing and never made to the blast. What protocol would be better to do the next uh, for A quality? Well, A quality has nothing to do with the protocol. You should add growth hormone. You should add serial vital. You should be taking all the vitamins, avoid alcohol, tobacco, drugs. If your husband or somebody in your house is smoking, don't allow it. Um, uh, and, and then you should try a day three transfer. Uh, what if you have PCOS? Is it better for me to do IVF instead of IUI? It depends on your age. Hormones with the home testing seem all uh, over the place. Maybe stress, for example, estrogen and progesterone can be high to low than high again. How do you control this during 
maybe an IUI cycle. Um, not sure. How long should you take growth hormone for? There's no length of time. At least, at least 18 days. At least 18 days. How many weeks of pregnancy should you continue into lipids with the history of recurrent pregnancy loss? You might check with the nurses. I don't know that protocol by heart. Amber, I had a 21 measured follicles at baseline today and ET was said by should I start my retrieval? I don't even know what that means. Oh, can you, is that a baseline? That's your baseline. That's fine. Uh, yeah, you can. Uh, does a late implantation with extremely low first bit indicate a likely chemical Oh, be hopeful, Nicole. Absolutely be hopeful. The, the numbers, if it's above the presence of pregnancy hormone, meaning the base, then you're pregnant until proven otherwise. All right, Gisela. Hi, Robinson. Ask questions on Instagram. Not many of you guys are asking questions. What if it is a cyst? Oh, a um, 21 millimeter follicle, not 21 measured follicle. Got it. Uh, it could be a cyst. Yeah, and you could wait a couple of days and get another baseline scan. Okay, folks, any questions? Should I do Orlissa before an FET for diffuse adenomyosis? I think that is definitely an option. Um, all right, Stephanie just joined us. Gisela joined us. Love in Florida joined us. Best protocol for women over 40. It's really the best protocol um, uh, is based on your AMH, your egg reserve. That determines a best protocol, but you should add growth hormone if you're over 40. Also, serovital acupuncture um, and look at our vitamins and the, fam the family building guide. Avoid smoking alcohol, drugs, and avoid people who smoke. Uh, any tips and tricks for low AMH at a younger age? Get get a uh, IVF as soon as possible and make embryos and freeze them. Freeze them. And yes, you can use growth hormone. Anelson, 623, welcome. ETS, welcome. Vanessa, ladies, feel free to join the CNY Fertility Group below. Click below. Vanessa, jump over to Instagram and tell us how to do it on Instagram. Does a psi improve fertility in women of advanced maternal age? I would have no idea. I haven't seen the data. Can you be too suppressed with birth control pills for IVF? Not likely. That's old data. It doesn't make sense. Not likely. How do you recommend priming? Oh, do you recommend priming with E2 prior to stimming? It depends on your situation. Uh, the family building guy has a breakdown of both. I don't know what that means. Oh, Jessica, welcome back. Lindsay, recycling banking with your eggs if you have low AMH, that's what I've done. Yes, yes, back-to-back um, -back cycling and bank your eggs. Um, everybody, Vanessa wants you to join the CNY Fertility Group. Why? Because you get to know all kinds of cool stuff. Can I get an IUI if I have a tiny fibroid and my glucose is a little high, but I'm taking care of it? Sure, as long as the fibroid is not inside the uterus. Do chemicals only happen because of chromosomal issue? Oh, do biochemical pregnancies uh, transfer to untested ended in a chemical. Uh, it's impossible to say why you had a biochemical pregnancy. There's too much information. Uh, Lindsay, five cycles of letrozole, three IUIs with Clomid and trigger. Time for IVF, my dear. Time for IVF. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Time for IVF. Low on AMH. How long should I try naturally before ovulation induction or IVF? Oh, six months at the most. Uh, Juliana, after priming with serovital and other vitamins for several months, should my husband get his sperm retested? No, it won't show it. It won't show it as a number. It'll show it as an outcome, which is better than a number. Do I recommend, what is the recommended treatment for adenomyosis? Well, it depends on how bad it is, but, um, 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 Borelissa can certainly be something, Lupron for three to six months. All of those are great. You're very welcome, Yuli Shermanson. Kiss, kiss, everybody. What day of cycle is the best day for a frozen embryo transfer? It has nothing to do with the day of the cycle. It has to do with the day the embryo is grown. So if it's a three-day embryo, then transfer on day three of your of the uh, start of progesterone. If it's a blastocyst, transfer it after six days of progesterone. Uh, how much is the medication? Depends on what the treatment is. You can talk to our financial group. Um, kisses, kisses. Hello, kisses, everybody. 
Um, is a fresh or frozen transfer better? Yes. That's not a joke. It just depends on what the circumstances are. How long should you take serovital prior to an IVF cycle? Serovital is a growth hormone secretagogue. You can get at Costco. Very inexpensive. Both partners should be on it for sperm and eggs. Um, and uh, you can be on it for you know three months. It's great. Uh, there are girls that sell medicines, whatever that means. With me being 35 with PCOS, so should I do IVF or IUI? No one can answer that question for you, really. Um, IVF, of course, is going to be quicker to a pregnancy and likely safer. Um, there is a CY, it looks like there's a CY, CNY medication group on Facebook. I did not know that. Preparing for an FET, um, hysteroscope showed inflammation on the uterus. Don't know what that means. They get, oh, endometritis, got it. Uh, is it okay to start estrogen for transfer if, it's, if you're still on the antibiotics? Yes. What is the best treatment plan for someone without tubes? IVF. Will having a hysteroscopy for fibroid and adhesions improve the chances of implantation in pregnancy? Absolutely. Uh, what's illegal, uh, Bellary House? Don't know what that means. My doctor wants to start me on Clomid after a hysteroscopy for a septate uterus. Should I request for letrozole instead? No, I mean, you can. Oh, I think, yeah, you're not supposed to sell drugs online, folks, unless you're a pharmacy. I think that's what uh, the young lady is mentioning. Um, if ERA shows more progesterone hours needed, does that mean FET will be delayed? No, it'll be precisely timed. Uh, if my 12 fertilized didn't do well, trying to make it to the last first round, should I do a day three transfer and freeze? Yes, Erica. I'll be coming from Louisiana when she comes. How many days should she stay? I'm assuming in Colorado, at least two or three days um, for a retrieval. And uh, if you're going to do a fresh transfer, you have to stay then. But at least uh, stay the day of the retrieval and day after until you recover. Is CMY thinking of opening a monitoring center down in Denver? Not at this time. Aaron, that's what I did. Okay. <laughs> Bob Smith, AMH of 0 0.5 is too low for IVF, not in our practice. What does the lining need to be thin at baseline? Less than four millimeters is nice. Anyone who wants the price for IVF, please go to our uh, CNY Fertility website. It's all there. You can also call our financial team. Hi, doctor. Do the results of my ERA change over time? No. Uh, is there an association between low BMI, underweight, and unexplained infertility? My OBGYN recommended weight gain before ART. It depends on how underweight you are because that will definitely affect your... That's a person whose hormones are out of whack is when you're underweight. If monitoring Colorado as an outside state and doing FET, can you give an estimate of time we should plan on staying for... Uh, egg retrieval cycle and frozen embryo training. Yeah. Egg retrieval cycle, you're going to be here for two or three days. FET, at least two days, more or less. All righty, we're jumping on Instagram and we're holding strong on Facebook and uh, YouTube. Is there an open date for the Florida location? It's already open in Victoria. Uh, I was there for 10 days and did monitoring and came home day after egg retrieval. Okay, thank you, Aaron. Is day three better than day uh, five blast testing for a 42-year-old patient with uh, with PCOS? Well, they, you know, a, not better. I mean, it's always better to go to blast if you can. Um, but if you want to transfer, you might want to do a day three. Bob Smith, my wife has a one tube open and had multiple miscarriages. Doctor suggested not to do IVF. Well, no. The reason, Bob, that they were suggested not to do IVF has nothing to do with your wife. It has to do with their company policy and how they look on the internet. That's the reason they don't want you to do IVF because if you don't get pregnant, it doesn't look good. We don't have that worry where we are. Can you treat azospermia? Nope. Not that I know of. Um, unless the reason for azospermia is the blockage and you're a reproductive urologist. Um, my son wants to know what the picture is behind me. That's a breaching whale. That's a whale. And that's my little gnome over there. But that's a, a whale that's jumping out of the ocean. We saw them in South Africa. It was wonderful, amazing. A right whale. That's not a right whale, but we saw them in, in there. Okay. What is the benefit of freezing at day three versus day five? You'll know more about your embryo if you freeze at day five. 
Um, any feedback on uh, day six low level mosaic? Well, yes, I'm going to do another talk on mosaicism. If you have a low level mosaic, folks, transfer them. I think that's the consensus now. It's getting more and more so. They're worth a transfer. High level mosaics and, that, and abnormals, not so much, but definitely a low level and a normal, probably well worth the time. Yes, it's lower pregnancy chances, but it's a pregnancy chance. Better than in the garbage. What do you think about medicine dosage of 600 of folicin 150 menopure having gotten zero eggs at retrieval for 45, Deborah? Well, I think the issue is low ovarian reserve and they're giving you maximum dose. So it looks like you may be in a situation where you don't have eggs available. Um, can't figure out how three of three follicles had no eggs because at, at that age of 45, you can make cyst-like follicles that have no eggs. Happens all the time. Even in menopause, you can make cyst-like follicles with no eggs. So that's exactly what's happening. Uh, you must have, um, you must check your AMH uh, and talk to your doctor about low ovarian reserve. Uh, it doesn't mean you can't try, but that is a very normal response uh, given your age and the fact that uh, they're giving you maximum dose of medications. Uh, the 2BC grading, don't ask me about grading. I just don't, yeah, your AMH is less than one. It's less, it's 0.1 and normal is about three. Uh, TTC for two years before seeing a fertility specialist between two specialists in the last 1.5 years of no plan on what is going on and what next steps are. How long before a treatment plan? Six weeks at CNY. Born with one fallopian tube, cut and burned. I have three children. Uh, is it possible for IVF for me to have another child? Absolutely. FSH is 9.5 and E2 is 45. Yeah, low ovarian reserve. That's the issue, Deborah. So you, the two options are donor egg, of course. It's always an option for anyone who has low ovarian reserve. But if that doesn't, if that's not what you want, then you may want to, um, uh, you may want to uh, try growth hormones, serovital, acupuncture, low carb eating, um, that kind of thing. I heard you give lovely nicknames to embryos you're implanting. When did this habit start? Is there a story to it? Julia, yes. Um, I started it in 1999. I started naming every embryo. And I like to give names that are just, you know, not the everyday names. And it's, it's, um, it's personal. It's yours. It makes it real. So, yeah, I love giving nicknames. And anyone who comes to my practice... Uh, and uh, does a transfer, I sure will. Um, does CMI also assist with MFI as well as diagnose sins of one tube? Uh, you, you're going to have to help me with that. Uh, hold on a second. Um, um, I just have to answer this. I apologize. All right, I apologize for that. Okay. Uh, I know what SINS is, but um, uh, CNY IVF protocol recommended low dose naltrexone. What's the evidence? No idea. Um, I, I, I have not read those studies. Uh, need to have your transfer my two cell and five cell in March. Need to have you transfer in March. March. <laughs> I don't, that's a long time. My husband has low motility and may have slow, according to semen analysis. Is IUI even worth it since his sperm still needs to move and meet my egg? No. Uh, how many letrozole trigger cycles would you suggest before moving to IVF? Uh, three, possibly six. Low AMH uh, at age 28, sorry. What should be the next step? IVF. Uh, and yes, there's a chance for success. Uh, um well, Deborah, you, don't be defeated about what your biology is. That's your biology. And so let's figure out how to manage it. You're defeated because you had an expectation that it would work at 45, which we all do, of course. Uh, but the bottom line is we still have our biology to deal with. And um, there are options, but it sounds like you don't want to exercise those options. So, I mean, I know it's heartbreaking. Um, time frame for test results, usually four to six weeks. 
and the results are good for a year. Yes, March, I'm transferring these two embryos. Since you name them, you can name my two and five cell for me. Of course I will. Make sure you get me to say, I want Dr. Magarelli to do the transfer. What are the success rates for IUI versus IVF? How old are you? What's your AMH? What's the sperm situation? How many pregnancies have you had? Do you have endometriosis? Have you ever had a pelvic infection? you have any tubal blockage? So, Nicole, there's no such thing. But in a ballpark, a 20-year-old has about a 20% chance with an IUI working. IVF will be around 40 to 45%, and IVF with chromosomal testing will be around a 60 to 80%. For 30, it's about 10% for an IUI to work, and about 30% for basic IVF, and 50% for IVF with chromosomal testing. At 40, it's about a 1 or 2% chance an IUI will work, and about a uh, 5 or 6% chance that um, IVF will work, and about a a 30 to 40% chance if you can get two chromosomally normal embryos. All right. I'm 48 and my FSH is 34. Anything to lower down, please? No. There isn't because that's those are, it's a gas gauge. Um, typically, women at uh, 44 is kind of the upper limit for using your own eggs just as a general rule. Doesn't mean we can't try. But after that, the chance of success is extraordinarily low. Can you test embryo after frozen? Yes, you just have to ask us. If I'm out of state and want to come see you, how many trips for one IVF cycle should I make? I live eight hours away. So Riley, so um, you'll come once for the retrieval and if you stay, you'll get your transfer. Now the rest we can do uh, remote. How much is IVF without insurance? Please go to our website and you can see all the prices there or you can call us. What's the average sperm count needed for an IUI? At least one or two million. I'm 31, had two successful pregnancies, all with natural IUIs. Since our miscarriage in June, we haven't gotten pregnant and going into IUI number five using donor sperm. I think it's time to move to IVF. Should we treat male factor if I'm doing IVF? Well, you should avoid alcohol. Your husband should avoid alcohol, tobacco, street drugs, hot tubs. Stay away from smoking. Uh, take his vitamins. Take serovital. Go to acupuncture. Yeah, that's what he can do. Ah, uh, by the way, folks, I am Dr. Magarelli right there. I should put Colorado, CNY Fertility Colorado. Got lots and lots of uh, space, uh, brand new facility, about a year into it. Got lots of room for more patients to do IVF. Um, great team. So come join us. Shout out to Bobby and the girls at Buffalo today. Okay, I'll do that. <laughs> uh, what to do after two failed euploid FETs, ERA, and anything else? You do an ERA, yes. Uh, had hysteroscopy in July, yes. Um, do um, acupuncture, yes. Um, avoid uh, smokers, yes. Uh, low carb eating, yes. Uh, you might be want to do a laparoscopy to see if you have endometriosis, yes. Uh, my wife, my husband has a 56% motility with a high count, but 3% morphology. I'd done one miscarriage and I know of a year ago. I'm 30, my husband's 29. What would you suggest based off that? Uh, IVF. With a low morphology, uh, IUIs are not, and sex are not likely to work. Uh, would it be, thank you. So Deborah, keep the faith, happy to help, um, but I can never get through. Who are you calling, uh, Deborah? Um, you've been trying to call for weeks, but I can never get through. Okay, it's a two hour, okay, we get 8,000 phone calls a day, uh, about 8,000. So it does take a long time to do that, but if you're a patient, then you should be able to connect through the portal. So always, if you're a patient, connect through the portal to save room for new patients to join. Um, and I'm pretty sure you can connect through the, through the... By the way, gals, do you know, maybe I'll ask you guys that, um, can you guys make appointments to see us without a phone call? Anyone have that answer? Okay. My sugar lips. I've had two pregnancies that ended up ectopic and my fallopian tubes were removed. So you need to do IVF. All right. That's what you need to do. Rebecca Rose. I'm not sure. Was she a nurse? Uh, but yeah, don't try to contact a person. Use the 800 line. Thank you, Lindsay. No. Hopeful, no. Yeah, we're working on being able to do it through the website. So maybe push that on the, uh, the web that you would love to be able to not have to use the phones. Okay. Erica, I always get an answer. It takes about 20 minutes. Portal is the best. Yes, on the website, you can request an appointment. So come on, man, do that. There you go. 
Jessica, you can make an appointment by contacting the nurses through the portal. Otherwise, you have to call in. But someone said you can request an appointment on the website. So, Erica, maybe you can explain. How many age would I expect to retrieve with an AMH level of 0 0.7 and 28? Probably four. Uh, Bob, no male factor issue, genetic test done, no issue. Four miscarriages is sure if you should do IVF or natural only. Age 38, nope. <laughs> Nope, Bob, uh, uh, IVF with chromosomally tested embryos. You need to find out whether or not your sperm and your wife's eggs create normal embryos or not, or else you'll be at this a long time. How soon after an ERI can I do my frozen transfer? Same cycle, never. The next cycle. Uh, Deborah, I did. Rebecca Rose told me to call and I cannot get through. Don't use the 800 number. I don't know who Rebecca Rose is, I apologize. How many age would I expect to retrieve with an AMH of 0 0.4? It depends on how old you are, Fatima. What do you think about PRP to improve the number of eggs or quality? I think that's um, a, 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 an effort. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of data. It's worth doing. Uh, to improve eggs, you want to do it in the ovary, not in the uterus. Ah. Wow, requesting through the website is for the initial appointment only, and they call you back usually a couple of months later, not two weeks. All right. We're working as hard as we can. Do you transfer more than one embryo ever? There are times when we do. Very rare. Once I sent an email through the portal to make an appointment with a provider, but I got a reply to call. Ha! Sorry about that. Is there a weight or BMI restriction for treatment? Not in our practice, Kelsey. Uh, you're 28 and 0.4. Again, yes, three or four eggs is what you should expect if your AMH is less than 0.5. Bob, should we go do fresh or frozen with such condition? You have to do frozen because you're going to do IVF with pre-implantation genetic testing. Let's just say it's easier to call in and keep calling if you're trying to get a sooner appointment. And also, gals, Please, if you want to be on our waiting list for appointment for cancellations, we do that all the time. A lot of times I'll call three times somebody, and if they don't answer, I call up the office and say, hey, add another person. PGT is pre-implantation genetic testing of embryos. That's where we test the embryos before we put them in. Is there an increase in successful transfer when using a known donor egg with the same DNA such as my sister? Absolutely not. At what point do you generally recommend hysteroscopy and or laparoscopy? Um, right after your second FET and if you're not successful. Been trying for three years and I'm 34. All tests are normal, unexplained. Should we go IUI 34? Well, IUI with Clomid or Letrozole for six months, then IVF. What do you think about HPV positive B4 transfer? Do you think of these transvaginalists might have come up with an H? Asking for a friend. I don't think so. You'll never get the same nurse unless you request it through the portal. Erica, thank you. Any medication for low AMH and egg release? Sure, lots of medications. It's called IVF. Is there an increase in success of doing a frozen transfer instead of a fresh transfer? No. Can I try to do that as I am not a patient yet? I'm trying to get a, an initial appointment. Um, uh, gosh, Deborah. Uh, can anybody help her? Help Deborah get a, an appointment. Uh, can you do a frozen transfer if someone has a half bladder? It's hard to have a full body. Of course you can. That's only to make it convenient, the full bladder. It, um, that just makes it convenient for me, to be honest with you. It's not convenient for you. All right. Wow, we're rocking here. Feels like I haven't been on this for a long time. Uh, have you guys worked with people with men having an issue with balance? Trans Absolutely. Balance translocation. My very, Nicole, my very first, um, PGT patient, uh, exactly had that in the mail and we ended up eliminating that balance translocation in the family tree and got a beautiful boy with a normal, beautiful boy. I made an appointment with you guys. Wish me luck. Of course I wish you luck. Uh, Deborah, yeah, I don't know. There you go, Deborah, Jessica, to set up an initial point, sometimes you do have to stay on the line for a while, but it's worth it. So Jessica Reppenhagen, Deborah, read her, call that number and just stay on the phone. Do FET cycles get canceled or pushed back if too close to Christmas? 
I don't know what that means. Trying to decide on an ERA in November or December for transfer the following month. Well, we're, I think we're only closed today. Can I request my eggs be thawed and frozen? Can I request my eggs be thawed and frozen? Don't know what that means. Do you, egg freezing? You guess, we do egg freezing. How many failed transfers do you recommend before doing an uh, ERA one? Curious as well. Looks like we have to ask again. I want to know if I should do this before my first call. What? what? Stacy Roberts. Don't know what the question. What do you think about transferring an abnormal embryo? Don't think of I. Um, uh, abnormal is abnormal. The studies show that when it says it's abnormal, you're ninety nine point nine percent sure that it's abnormal. If it says it's normal, you're only 60% sure it's normal. So it's a better test for abnormal. So if you have an aneuploid, you have an aneuploid and the likely chance is that it's simply not going to stick. It's your choice whether you put it in. Um, no judgment about that. How soon do you recommend adding Lovenox, Plaquenil, and Neupogen? I don't. Our first FET implanted but just miscarried at nine weeks. Uh, went on Omnitrope last cycle, had four eggs and now six follicles. I think it woke up my other ovary. Good. You're in New Jersey. Good. Can a sperm donor vial be used more than once? I've heard it can be scraped to get two to three uses. Yeah, I think if you ask. Thoughts on tra transferring low-grade embryos that are not PG tested all the time, and they make babies all the time. Uh, Lindsay says, Dr. K would say, give it a chance. And that's to the lady with the abnormal embryo. That is exactly what he would say. But she asked me the question, Lindsay. <laughs> it's taking time between retrieval and transfer. Do you recommend repeating the antibiotics prior to transfer immune protocol? Yes. Uh, Vanessa, thank you. Kiss, kiss. Thank you. I don't know who you're kissing, but thank you. Uh, history of first trimester loss, two natural and an IVF. RPL tests were okay, no endo, low progesterone, but fixed with meds, no thyroid issue, banked two normal embryos. Any recommends to maximize chances for FET? Yes. Um, acupuncture. Uh, vital growth hormone. Uh, low carb. Tuscaloosa, Alabama. What's the nearest office we should go to? Well, there's, um, for IVF, you only have New York and Colorado right now, so you choose. Been taking metformin for over a month. Would that help avoid hyperstimulation? Not necessarily, Victoria. After the consultation, how soon would one start treatments? It's usually up to you guys, Kelsey. What we do is it's after you have a consultation, two weeks later, you should be called by financial. Then once you guys approve yourselves for what you want to do, then um, you know, that's the financial group. Then you call the, the global travel or the local team, and then they'll get the testing done. Once the testing done, and again, that's up to you, uh, we get started usually the next month. Um, Charmin, is it really possible to get pregnant with OE with an AMH under 0.08? OE, don't know OE. I did blood work today and my HSG is in this Friday. Consult is on Monday, roughly when do you think we could start? Probably six weeks, Nicole. All right, guys, it looks like it's five o'clock. So um, I think I'm gonna check out. I do recommend adding Vital, even if you're on growth hormone. Best piece of advice uh, during the two week waiting period after the transfer, believe. The body listens, believe you're pregnant. So thank you all. It's been absolutely wonderful as usual. Another week has gone by very quickly. Um, it is my pleasure. Next week is questions and answer. Then the last, I think after that, I'll finally finish up the endometriosis talk, which I'm happy to do. Um, anyway, guys, it is such a pleasure. This is Dr. Magarelli. Kiss, kiss. Everybody love the kisses. Uh, CNY Fertility Colorado. Come see us. We'd love to have you. Got a great team. Thanks to everybody out there who supports us, the global team, the nurses, the donor team, the pharmacy team, the financial team, the front desk team, the lab team, the embryology team, the, the doctor team, the, uh, the nurse practitioner team, the, the planner team, the marketing team. You guys are fantastic. We really appreciate you all. We appreciate you all. And I just wish you all the best. Think pregnant thoughts, everybody. Take care.